Well, one piece of advice that comes to mind is that in the course of, of, of my studies, I came to realize that one of the areas that is not often focused on by, by students in academia is the importance of ethical decision making. In particular, the ethical implications of our theology and of the, the exegetical conclusions that we, we reach. There's a, um, a very wonderful book written by uh, Klein Snodgrass entitled Between Two Truths. And in it, he makes the statement that truth is like a flower with deep roots. If you want to enjoy it fully, you need to take it whole. If you only take the top part, it will wither in your hands. And I think that that is very much the case when it comes to this whole question of the ethical implications of our theology. By pressing that issue as students, you begin to realize that the truth has deep roots and you, you just can't take the, the top half. So for example, Michael Vishagrad has made the comment that the new perspective on Paul, uh, at least one of the approaches to the new perspective on Paul, which uh, many students and seminaries around the world uh, embrace, is that the boundary markers of Jewish identity were erased with the coming of the Messiah. And Michael Vishagrad makes the point that if that's the case, if the boundary markers of, of Jewish identity were erased through the coming of the Messiah, and the church were to fulfill its mission in the world by bringing the gospel to all people and, and, uh, and, and, and this grand uh, mission of, of, of the church, kind of the, the kingdom of God est being established over all the earth were to take place, then essentially the ethical implications of that perspective that the boundary markers of Jewish identity are erased is that the Jewish people are erased. And the question then arises, is that, is, that, uh, is that what God intended? And so here we, here we have a very important um, uh, ethical question that we need to ask when we arrive at, at that kind of theology. Are we prepared to argue that God wants to erase Jewish people from this world and, and from, from the church? And if the answer is no, then we need to go back and relook at our theology and the exegetical conclusions that we've arrived at. And so this is a very good example of where whenever we arrive at, at theological conclusions, we need to ask ourselves, what are the deep roots of those conclusions? What are the ethical implications of those conclusions? So that when we take that flower, we're taking it whole, not just the top half.